Hello, welcome. Got a couple of you on here. Uh, let me know you're on here by giving a thumbs up and emojis saying hi. Irving Johnson, live, boxed up. Hi, coach. It's George. Hey, George, I saw you comment the other day. Now, George, don't stay up too late tonight looking for Bigfoot Sasquatch. I know you have school tomorrow. What's up, Drew from the Chronicles of Drew? Drew says, I'm doing this a little bit early. Let me uh, tell you why. I thought I saw my son. He wants to ride his motorcycle, but he saw me up here. Ah, George is a good friend of my son. Good kid, George watching. I've coached him for years. Him and his family are good friends of ours. They've come out here camping before. George, you're gonna love this. I'm gonna tell some creepy ghost stories. The campfire, uh, last year, after the end of our football season, we had half the team come out and camp and George had some really creepy ghost stories. And I told some, and George ended up having nightmares and waking up screaming in the middle of the night. All, all of you watching, be prepared because you're going to have the same experience George had last summer during that, that camp out up here. So I'm going to tell you some really creepy stories. <clears throat> here as we get a fire going. Give me just a second. Hold on a second. I think my son wants to ride his dirt bike up here, but he saw me recording, and so he's hesitant because he doesn't want to interfere. But I'm trying to tell him it's okay. Wait a minute. All right, so listen, here's what's going on. We're doing a night hunt. George says, okay, yes, love those. He remembers that, yeah. Uh, George, it was like a very lucid dream. He was sleeping in the tent on the side. Dearly and I were sleeping out here, not in a tent. We were on an air, air I was on an air mattress. Dearly was in our hammock, and three of the guys from the football team, three or four of them were in the tent. And George said he felt something or somebody run his hand down the side of the tent, like touching from the outside of the tent. And I was asleep when it happened. His scream woke us all up. <clears throat> maybe, maybe the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch that may or may not live in the woods behind my house got up close and personal with George from the other side of the tent. Hello, Bonnie Bowden. So here's what we're doing. And I just posted the video on the channel that I'm gonna do a live night hunt tonight. And I said it was gonna start at eight. So I was in the house and I told my wife, well, I got to do all this stuff to get set up. Should I have a fire or all this? She goes, yeah, and why don't you just live stream it already? I'm like, well, I don't have my stuff up there. She says, so just set the camera up. You know, people love to watch for Bigfoot on our property. And um, yeah, uh, George is asking if Daniel can say hi. Here he comes. Hey, Daniel, come here. Do you want to ride your bike? Yeah. yeah, you can ride your dirt bike. I'm like, well, uh, George is watching and he wants to say hi. You want to say hi to George? Don't say his last name. We got to protect people's identities. George, please don't tell anybody who you are. Don't tell them where you live, all this stuff. The internet can be a dangerous place. So, uh, yeah, so Daniel's coming up to say hi, George. So, Dearly had the idea that I'd go ahead and start live streaming and let you guys see the entire setup. Hey. George, this is George right here. Boxed, yeah. Yeah, boxed up. Yeah. So. Hey, George. <clears throat> hey, everyone else. Hey, Peggy Wilcox. Peggy appreciates that we're doing this. We'll appreciate you appreciating us, Peggy. So what I'm gonna do, because I've got to bring my stuff up, I'm gonna bring up a chairs. And buddy, you can ride your dirt bike. Yeah, should I just ride it down there? You can ride it up here, just don't hit the camera. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to go Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting tonight once it's dark. And so I'm just live streaming the setup. So, right. guys, you might see my son go by on his dirt bike. Also, when I eat dinner, uh -huh. can I warm up the mac and cheese? Yeah, buddy. Thank sure, you, whatever you want. Love you, too. Yeah, you should drive your bike by here and wave and say hi to everybody, huh? And don't go too fast, huh? All right. So here's what we're doing. Yeah, he's cool, Drew. Uh, George does have a channel. George, you have a channel, right? Where you like, um, you, you like test out or give reviews of sneakers or shoes, right? You like shoes. So everybody, is that your channel, George, boxed up? 
Yeah, so if you guys support George on his channel. He he does shoe reviews. George is a great kid. He's an exceptional athlete. He's a great quarterback, good at basketball. I already did that a long time ago. All right, well, if you get a new channel going, let us know, and we'll get you some – we'll try to send some folks from this channel over to your channel. So basically, guys, uh, hello, Raptor Gaming. So I'm just going to let the camera run live. How many's on here? Got like 55 on here? Okay. Um, so you can watch the woods for him, her, it, or they. It's eerily quiet, but that's because we're up here talking. You'll see Dan will come by a few times. So I'm going to get my chair. I'm going to get stuff to start a fire. We still have about 40 minutes or so before it gets dark. Um, so I'm going to live stream continuously. I'm going to come up, tell some creepy campfire stories. And then once it's full dark, we're going to take the flashlight. We're going to take the, the cell phone slash camera off the tripod and we're going to walk around the property and see if we can find there's his bike starting up see if we can find that bigfoot sasquatch that may or may not live on this property hey catitude you're not late you know we just started a few minutes ago what i was just saying is that i've gone ahead and started the camera we're going live i'm not even ready to go yet i'm gonna go get stuff to start a fire get my chair get some snacks I'm just going to keep the camera running so if anything or anyone or whatever tries to sneak down out of the woods to us, we can catch that on camera. Uh, I'm just going to be back and forth for like the next 10 or 15 minutes getting my stuff. Uh, Gates, Masher, Ura. If you're a former Marine, thank you for your service. It says, good to see you once again. It's been a while. Heck, the last time I stopped by, you had short hair. Yeah, it has been a while then. Um, yeah, well, we spent the winter in the Philippines, and I didn't do much YouTube, and I was doing predominantly Facebook. And JD Jadzia, hello, Kevin and everyone. Are you my niece over in the Philippines? Mrs. Evans Artie Party. Yay, ye. All right. Andrea Dingbat, hello. Andrea, you are in, is it Australia or New Zealand? You've been coming around for years. Appreciate your support. Say hello to Mr. Dingbat and all those pets you have, okay? Um, John Chorney, there's a familiar name. Good to see you, John. Uh, Raptor Gaming wants to know what time. It's 7.04. Come back in about 40 minutes. It'll be dark. Oh, thanks, Catitude. Catitude loves my long hair. Look, it's all one length, even the bangs. See? Because, bah, bah, I'm like a rock star. Do you see me singing Poison by Alice Cooper on here over in the Philippines? I upload that video. Go watch it. One love could kill my pain. Your thrill. There goes Daniel on his dirt bike. All right. I want to love you, but I better not. Don't touch. I want to kiss you. Just go watch a video. It was a pretty good performance. Gave with my band. I have a band in the Philippines. We're called 10 Octaves. That's because there's 10 of us. Um, and we're very flexible because, listen, the problem with bands is people just don't show up for practice. So if only four of us are there that day, we call ourselves four octaves. But we sing like 80s rock and stuff. Oh, shoot. I need these. Why am I putting these away? I can't read comments. So, Catitude, thank you for loving the long hair. I got all these Karens over at Fakebook constantly tell me I look ridiculous with it because I'm too old. I need to cut it off like they did because they don't want to freaking deal with it. Let me tell you, long hair is easier to deal with than short hair. When you have short hair, it's gotta, you got to fix it. You got to make sure it's going a certain way. When it's long, man, you just put it in a ponytail and go on with your day. Whatever. Bonnie Bowden says, Daniel has grown so much into a young man already. It really shows how great a job... You and Dearly are doing with him. Thank you for being the active parents that you are. Well, thank you, Bonnie. We appreciate that. That's that's really, really do appreciate that. Oh, J.D. Jadzia is not my niece. This individual is from Canada. Okay. Uh, got a niece in the Philippines named Judea, and she has a very similar name on social media. Mrs. Evans, already party. Can't wait to hear a spooky story. Ah, 
Andrea Dingbat's in the UK? Why was I thinking Australia? I'm sorry, you know, I turned 50 last November this past year. Where is he? Coming? There he is. I've got some timer's disease now. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. All right, George can't wait for me to tell the scary stories. Okay. Uh, George, with your parents' permission, we got to get you out here to ride this motorcycle now that Daniel's riding it finally. Um, Emil J.A. asks, what's my favorite Filipino foods? Hold on a second to that question. All right. Um, 90, I'm drinking a protein shake. Like in the video I made earlier, FYI, I'm trying to get this company to sponsor me. And until they do, I'm not going to show you what it is. So when I go off screen to, you know, uh, refresh myself. Don't think I'm over there drinking an adult beverage or something because I'm not. Uh, it's just <clears throat> whatever. <clears throat> I just met with my CPA today. I need some money to pay some taxes. And if those folks would sponsor me, it would help. All right. So of course the next year taxes will be even higher. Um, Emil J.A. asks, what's my favorite Filipino foods? Uh, basically all of them, 90% of our diet here is Filipino food. George knows this, him and his parents and the rest of our team and their parents and the other coaches have been out here and dearly just cooks a smorgasbord every time folks come out here. It's all Filipino food. It's like a Filipino buffet. Um, there's just a couple of Filipino foods I don't like. 90 to 95% of our diet is Filipino food because dearly is the one that does the cooking. Um, <clears throat> if I want like Western food, I have to kind of request it or go out. To get it and um and dearly is such an amazing cook she's she does great with pasta um so anyway uh there's a couple i don't like like the little crushed up shrimp that you dip the boiled green bananas in i forget the name of it i don't like that it smells terrible i have tasted it now listen i won't claim not to like a food unless if i've, I've actually f tried it and given it a fair shake and in doing just that, I found out that I loved balut. You know, it's the boiled chicken or duck fetuses when they're like 18 days old. They hatch it like 21 days, they boil them. Uh, it's illegal in the U.S., of course, considered animal cruelty, but it's a delicacy in Asia. When we were in the Philippines this winter for five months, we'd go out almost every night and get balut. I'd eat four or five balut a night. Love balut. Really missed it. Um, that might be one of my favorites, of course, chicken adobo. My mouth's watering just talking about this. Can you hear the saliva in my mouth? So yeah, there I go on and on about food. Um, uh, Stat says the hotel was scary rocking your room. I don't get it. All right, straight out of Stockton. I ain't straight out of Compton. I'm straight out the trailer. That's a Kid Rock quote. Okay, John Prague is with us. Um, Let's see, the Mrs. Edmondson, there's a regular, hello. Now, let me see if I get some timer's memory here. You are in Oklahoma, right? I think you might be in Oklahoma City. I know we were there last summer and the day we left, you mentioned, hey, if you come by Oklahoma City, let me know so I can say hi or you guys can, can come here. But it was on the 4th of July last year after we'd driven to the Grand Canyon and Arizona back. Guys, I'm going to have to go get my stuff or it's going to get dark on me before I get my fire built. All right. Uh, Tammy Krisky. Hello. Tammy says, hi, Kevin. Great to see you. You look great with long hair. Thank you, Tammy. You know, you guys are great. You guys accept me for who I am over here. Probably because you've been watching me for years. You know I do what the hell I want to do and I don't care what anybody says about it. There's whatever, that other social media platform. They're like, cut your hair, put a shirt on. It was 96 degrees almost every day over in the Philippines. So I'd be outside making reels for fake book. And I didn't have no daggone shirt on. And half the time I was at the beach. Why would I put a shirt? Oh, wait, I'm at the beach. Let me put a shirt on. It's 96 degrees. Might have been 20 degrees over here. Your water line's freezing. I was over there sweating like crazy. Catitude says age is just a number. Thank you. I agree. 
All right. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Edmonds saying if you got it, flaunt it. They're just jealous of your healthy long hair. You know, and again, I mentioned I'm 50. Look how much gray's in here. Like, like I got some here on the sideburns, but like, look at the rest. It's like still brown. It's like chestnut, man. I love it. I love my long hair. I ain't cutting this off. I was supposed to start playing guitar again once I got back. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Tomorrow we will have been back for two weeks. We've adjusted to the time zone difference. Um, see that cardinal? Gates Masher Ura. Great to see I'm back. You enjoy my stories. All right. Mrs. Evans' arty party says she's been watching me since I started before you were even quitting the post office. Wow, so you've been watching since I used to try to like grow stuff in gardens and raise chickens. Oh no, I've only got 23% battery. Oh, gosh, how could I have done this? How could I have not charged my phone? All right, guys, we're gonna have to do something different because I don't wanna stop this live feed. How about I walk you with me down to the house and I bring a charger out and I, we just do this from a different angle until we get a good charge, and then we come back up here. How's that sound? Because this is where him, her, it, or they are. Hey, Stats sent me $2. Tax paying chain and hopes you have visitors tonight. Thank you, Stats. Dollars will certainly go towards my taxes. Yes. I owe more money in taxes this year than I used to ever make in an entire year. It's crazy. And I love it because it means we're successful, right? And we have you folks to thank. Thank you for that. Our tax liability is 50% greater than the average household income in the United States. <sighs> what a year we had last year. Thank you for supporting us. It wouldn't have happened without you folks, okay? <clears throat> All right. Okay, Annette Flynn is in Pennsylvania. Hello, Annette. Hey, Peggy Wilcox, yeah, if this hair ever does go, it's going to go to, to Locks for Love. Yeah, Emil doesn't like that fish paste either. Hi, Janine Graham. Yes, the Mrs. Edmondson is in Oklahoma, so I remember that one. All right, um, so here's what we're going to do. I, I, I don't want the phone to die, so we're going to continue to go live, but from different angles. Let's show you around this beautiful property as I walk back down to the house and plug the phone into charge on the back porch or somewhere in the backyard. You get to see how much this place has really grown up. Give me a second. All right, it's crazy because I can't wear my glasses right now because they're for reading and I wouldn't be able to see where I was going past three feet in front of me. So let's watch for him, her, it, or they back here as we go. Well, I got a lot of you guys on here. All right. See if any things following us by the way something i was going to talk about tonight is i think we might have brought back an attachment you remember dr brew house detecto de brujas in spanish that means witch detector it's a spanish conquistador bayonet slash sword that my grandfather gave me for christmas daniel will be the 10th generation owner of that sword it goes back to the 1880s uh comes from our Filipino grandfather's great, great Spanish grandfather, who was the first Spaniard to marry a Filipina and thus start the mestizo bloodline in our family. Um, oh, I just got the low battery. <clears throat> so you know the Capri, right? The Filipino version of the Bigfoot Sasquatch. Uh, you probably read The Isle of Capri, the book that I wrote after some time spent on a very strange island over there in the Philippines. Look how far we've come. Came from way up there. So uh, he's known to smoke sweet-smelling cigars. They smell like Swisher Sweets, the cherry-flavored Swisher Sweets. So about four nights ago, um, just, before, just before dark, one of our neighbors 
the guy that was back in the woods actually back there, the guy that was shooting a rifle you heard earlier, because he may or may not have seen dog man at his door the other night at 3 a.m. Um, he was down here. Daniel had been over at his house. He has a son Daniel's age. Whoa, somebody just gave me $10. Who's that? Sammy Eldon. Keep on making videos. Love this channel. Thank you. You keep on giving me money. I'm going to keep on making videos. Now, I'll do it without the money, but I do appreciate that. <clears throat> Again, as I was mentioning earlier, met with my CPA today. Uh, our tax situation is uncomfortable. This will help. Thank you. Um, so anyway, we're standing out there talking as he's bringing my son back and the boys are out here playing in the yard. We got a whiff of this sweet smelling cherry cigar smoke and me and dearly looked at each other like, like, and we're thinking, I said, I said it and she said it at the same time, Capri. And of course the neighbor was like, what's that? And we told him he laughed. Uh, he's not laughing now after potentially seeing dog man at his door at 3 AM the other night. Um, so anyway, Last night, the power went out. That's why I didn't go live last night. The power was out until just about midnight, and we had these big windstorms. I went out on the front porch just to get some air because we had the uh, had a fire going in the wood stove, so it didn't matter. We don't need electricity. We don't have a generator. We don't care. We don't need it. We're prepared. Uh, look at this firewood. I got three years' worth of firewood there, especially since we spend our winters in the tropics. We just need it for early fall and spring. Um... So I went out on the front porch just to get some fresh air because it was so hot in the living room from the fire because we were burning, trigger alert, well-seasoned red oak. So I went out, I was looking at stars, and again, I got that whiff of the sweet-smelling cigar smoke. It smelled like a Swisher Sweet, a cherry cigar. So I'm thinking we may have brought either a Capri or a spirit of a Capri back with us as an attachment to that bayonet slash sword that was given to us by my Filipino grandfather who got it from his great, great Spanish grandfather. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get an extension cord to bring the charger out because I don't wanna get too far away from where the action is. So I'm gonna put the phone right here that's the campground up there. That's where we were. And that's where we get a lot of sightings, potentially. Actually, I can get a better angle than that. Yeah, here's the lower trail in the campground. Let me get a log to put on this tripod so it doesn't fall over. Give me just a second. I don't want to go over there. Under that pile of wood, we have a mother rabbit with some baby rabbits. We call them kits, I guess. I don't know how many she has, but so we're not disturbing her. Okay, so now for the next several minutes, I've got to go fish out the um, extension cord and a phone charger to hook this phone up to charge. So we'll have a full charge by the time it does get dark so we can go Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting at night, okay? So just watch for him, her, it, or they. If you see anything moving, make sure to comment so other people can see as well, and I'll be right back, okay? Thank God this isn't a horror story. Wait, it is kind of horror movie slash. Okay, I take back those words. I just said, I'll be right back. Remember, you never say that in a horror movie. Or if you're doing like a live stream, Bigfoot Sasquatch slash Dogman Night Hunt. I will return momentarily. How's that? All right.
Okay, so I, I found the extension cord. So I'm gonna run it from here down to the house. We're about 20 yards from the house. I'm gonna have to find a, a phone charger. That shouldn't be too big of a problem. Hopefully I rolled this thing up. Let's get some shout outs. You guys see anything up here while I was gone? Hmm? Hmm? Potentially? All right. Oh, Life with Dearly's watching. Hi, honey. Honey, I need a phone charger. I brought the phone back down here because I'm gonna have to get a charge on what you're doing. I'm live streaming. I'm Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting. Uh, I don't remember what happened. Okay. It's by the tree. Somebody said it's by the tree. Jan Decker. Oh, thanks. Will you bring that to me, buddy? <clears throat> My son actually just came out of the house with a phone charger. Somebody said they saw something by the tree. What did you see by the tree? Here, buddy. Well, you want to say hi? Get my six. There you go. There. Plug that in, please, there. You know where it goes, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Where, next to the door? Yeah, you know, where we plug stuff in out there. Okay, how's that? Mm. I feel like that crazy dot guy in Back to the Future. <laughs> Hurry, Marty, get in the DeLorean. I remember watching that movie when it was new in the 80s, when I was a kid in the movie theaters. Huh? In. Okay, thanks, buddy. Back then, I identified as Marty, the good-looking, cool kid. Now, I identify as a crazy freaking Mad Hatter scientist. Oh my gosh, where have the years gone? See if this works before the lightning strikes. Mm. Success. All right. So we're now getting a charge. All right. Okay, so Drew says, the Chronicles of Drew Bear says it was like a peeker. Okay, Kenny says, at one point I thought there was one up the tree, but Kevin, if that wasn't you, who was wearing the green cloak? What are you talking about? Have, have we already started potentially to see stuff back here already and it's not even dark yet? All right. I got to change the clothes. Look at this. I'm wearing shorts and it's going to get cold. Remember, I'm used to 90 plus degree temperatures for the last five months from being in the Philippines. <sighs> Hi, dearly. Blah, blah, blah. No, Bonnie, we don't have any more rabbits or chickens right now because Bigfoot Sasquatch keeps getting them all. Uh, Debbie Ray says someone was in green squatting by the tree. Which one? This tree? There's green trees back there. Maybe you saw... Maybe you were seeing a tree. So the tree behind you had an entity with a green cloak. But back in the forest, there seemed to be a few dark spots and maybe up in the tree. Oh, this tree behind me? This one? There was something behind that tree? To the right. Okay. Lou Wazoo says they have Bigfoot up there in Maine. Yeah, you do. They're everywhere. Oh, yes. Kenny says yes, this tree. All right. Hello, Milagros Orco. All right, so guys, let me go change clothes. We're gonna get a charge. Um, I'm gonna get ready. We're gonna go to the campfire, build a fire, tell some spooky stories, and then go Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting, okay? The Mrs. Edmondson said it was the Green Goblin. Brittany Ann Thompson says, hello, happy Sasquatch hunting. Wayne says something was there. Someday says, hi. Okay, Andrea Dingbat saw it too, moving by the tree. All right. <clears throat> Let me go get on some more appropriate Bigfoot Sasquatch night hunting clothing attire and some stuff start a fire and I'll be back. So just keep watching, huh?
on my six. All right, everybody. I have on more appropriate potential Bigfoot Sasquatch night hunting attire. I'm no longer wearing shorts. Let me show you what I'm wearing. Running tights. Underneath flannel pajamas. Those running tights are warm, I tell you. That's why I run in them when it's cold. All right, so we about have everything. We've got a charge. We are at only 30%. 30%. I would like it to get a little bit higher. So guys, I hate to leave you, but how about I've got some snacks and a cooler. I got some food, a lighter, some paper. We'll get sticks and firewood up there. So how about this? I'm gonna go ahead and go up there and take my stuff up and then I'll come back and get the phone because we went from like 18% to 30 in just that short period of time. So let me give some shout outs. I wanna welcome everybody that's here. I have for some timers disease. I don't even remember where my glasses are. Here they are. Okay. Oh, and I'm not totally not endorsing our nation's capital. Got this hat last year when we went up, I think it was two years ago, that spring that, uh, hey, love my country, just don't trust my government. Um, that, uh, what was it? They had in the spring, the Cherry Blossom Festival. Yeah, we went up there to that. So all those cherry trees that were gifts from the Japanese government, uh, like thousands of cherry trees are beautiful. If you ever get up to DC, uh, this time of year, do it. Ernest, I like it when you say that. When I say what? What, get my six? Dave De DeBauer, DeBoer, Mark and Mel have been researching them in the swamps down here for 10 years, okay. Hello, Brittany Ann Thompson, you still got sunshine there in Kentucky? Yeah, we're in Virginia, just due north of you. Well, actually, we're east. Um, was in Kentucky last year, spent a day at the Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Um, no, you didn't see me January the 7th. Yeah, 34. And by the way, it was January the 6th. No. Bigfoots. Kenny says Bigfoots can change colors. and Yeah, they can. Yeah, I saw one in Colorado. Kenny just points it out. We caught that one on camera when we were in Colorado last summer. Was that last summer? My gosh, we go... Travel so much, time flies by. I can't remember when was when. All right. Um, so Brittany says there's a squatch. Brittany saw a squatch somewhere. What the heck is that? What the heck is that right there? Oh, that's the Bigfoot Sasquatch Observation Center. Okay. <clears throat> So, Emil J.A., I'm in New Jersey, and the sky is already dark. I guess the camera makes it look lighter outside than it is. No, we just have, it's a, there's some overcast. Um, it's almost dark. Twisted Nip Z718, is there dog man activity in my area? Yes, we believe there is. A neighbor of mine saw one at 3 a.m. the other night. So, that's why we're doing this tonight. Okay. 33%. So guys, let me take my stuff up and then I'm going to come back and get the camera. I think we'll be at about 40 or 50. So keep looking. Stuff like, on it. I forgot my flashlight anyway. I got to get that. So bear with me. Five minutes or so, we're going to go back up to the campground, build a fire, tell some creepy stories and look for him, her, it, or they, i.e. Bigfoot Sasquatch.
to my six. So what's up, everybody? It's almost too dark to see me. It's gone a little bit longer than I'd hoped to be. Um, since I still had daylight up there, <clears throat> I went ahead and prepared the fire pit. I didn't start the fire yet. I want to get that on camera. I want you guys to be part of that. So you get the experience from your living room or your bedroom, wherever you are, of being out here in these potentially Bigfoot Sasquatch infested woods and fields with me, sitting around a campfire, listening to scary stories, watching for him, her, it, or they, okay? So. Getting ready to go up to the campground. Let me get my old man reading glasses out. I'm gonna give some shout outs to some newcomers. See how charged up we are. Came down here, we're at like 18% battery life. We've been plugged in for a while. Now we're at 45. This is great. That'll last a while. Let's see. Hey, George is still there. He's saying, hi, coach. What's up, George? All right, who else we got? Patricia Turner. I've seen odd stuff here in the Cascade Mountains. Yeah, the Cascades. That's out in Washington State. I used to live out there. I was at Fort Lewis. Uh, yeah, in the Seattle area. Um, those Cascade Mountains. I used to go Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting out there. That's a massive territory out there. Hello, sweetness overload. Typical Jason is watching. He says Bigfoot Sasquatch, and he's laughing so hard he's crying. Listen, if you're new to the channel, hello, Terry Finnan in Ireland. Great to see you, Terry. Um, I'm of Irish ancestry, by the way. Half English, half Irish. Listen, I'm not arrogant enough to know whether him, her, it, or they want to go by Bigfoot or Sasquatch. So that's why I say Bigfoot Sasquatch. And I just found out last year that that is now pretty much the going term in the cryptozoological community. Nobody, nobody calls them either Bigfoot or Sasquatch anymore. They, like everybody calls them Bigfoot Sasquatch now. And potentially, I have uh, coined that term. So... <clears throat> I will live in infamy in the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch community. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to the campground now. We're going to start a fire. We're going to sit down, tell some creepy tales, scary stories, ghost stories. We're going to, we're going to look. We're going to listen. Um, I won't be talking as much as we're on the way up because I want to be listening for what may or may not be creeping along behind us in the woods. Okay? All right, Catitude says it will always be Bigfoot Sasquatch to her. Thank you. All right, we just unplugged the cord. Let me get this now. Can I reverse the camera angle? Yes. So now, oh, there's the ugly part of my yard. Down tree that fell three years ago. I still have not chopped it all the way up. It's a big old white pine. When it fell, it went all the way up into the meadow up there. So now I'm down to the stump. Yeah, I'm walking away from a tripod. Got to have that. Duh. I'm so... That's why they call me Crazy Lake. I'm so excited to get up here to the campfire. I'm leaving my essential equipment behind. Alright, let's see. Get my tripod. All right, now I have my tripod. So now let's go back up there. Now guys, listen, the connection went out for just a second. If the connection goes out, don't leave. Stay tuned because it'll come right back. Okay. Just got finally after it out nowhere. Look, literally like in the middle of nowhere. That's our big field. That's like two acres, three acres out there. We've got these woods back here in the meadow. Um, finally got high speed connection. So it should, if it does drop for just a second, hang tight, it'll come right back. Right. Wilcox just confirmed that the I like to do it with the least amount of artificial light. It's that dark figure right there in the center of the screen. The 
Got Sammy Eldon watching in Arkansas. Welcome, Sammy. That was a cedar tree. All right, we're going up the trail to the campground. clouds. We've got mixed clouds, scattered clouds. <clears throat> sometimes the moon's out, sometimes it's hidden. So here we are coming back to the campground. So my neighbor who potentially saw the dog man at 3 a.m. the other night. If you look in the center of the screen, you can see a faint light. <clears throat> you can only see lights at their house. This time of year when the leaves are off, but it's half a mile away. We're on top of a hill. You gotta go way down into like a, like a holler, hollow, as people who aren't from Appalachia would call it, then climb up the other side it's a half mile walk to that light you see over there. And there's nothing in between here and there, that half mile, except woods. And this is where that creature, these creatures potentially, freaking, that's what they call home. So, all right, let me get, we're to the campground. Need to get a fire going. There's the fire pit. There's my chair, there's my snacks. Gonna eat dinner up here with y'all. So let me reverse the camera again. All right, get this set up. Okay, so if you're concerned because it's pitch black dark and you think that the video's messed up, it's not. It's nighttime. We're out here at night, but I'm getting ready to start the fire, so we will soon have light, okay? Just bear with me and be patient. There's the moon, by the way. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's almost full. fire going. That's why they call it fire.
There we go. We got us a nice fire. So it is eerily quiet up here. Eerily quiet. So here's my dinner. Um, I have, I do have a flashlight with me, and it's fully charged. It's solar powered. Um, I don't want to really. I'm trying to keep artificial light to a minimum, but heck, I guess I'll see the fire, right? So why not show you what my dinner is? All right. So I got a can of what is this? Progresso. Mediterranean style lentil soup. Not sponsored. But I'm gonna open this up and set it beside the fire to warm up because this I actually skipped dinner. I was so excited to come up here and do this Bigfoot Sasquatch slash dogman live stream night hunt. I don't even eat dinner. Got this at Costco today. Go to my wife's channel. It's called Life with Dearly. She put a video of us at Costco today. We spent way too much money. We went to get snacks and water for the boys' football game on Saturday because we're the, the team managers. And, you know, George, if you're still watching, yep, I've been lassoed into coaching again. So, but uh, it's, 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 so I'm coaching again too, I guess. Still coaching. Um, but we went to Costco to get snacks, right? And my wife wanted to get like one thing or something. And we ended up spending $472. You ever do that at Costco? All right, so let me put this over here. Right. So, that, now we've got the scent of uh, food heating up. That should bring him in. I'm gonna mess with the camera a little bit because I wanna be comfortable. I want you guys to have a view of the campfire. I want you to feel like you're here. All right, let me get my old man reading glasses on. See what you guys are saying. I want to participate in this conversation here. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, Andrea Dingbat is back, good. Kenny says, Kevin, this would be a perfect time to have thermal camera or binoculars. I bet they're peeking watching you. Yeah. We were in communication last year with some cat that was supposed to send us all this free thermal imagery night vision stuff, but he never did. Um, so I just need to break down and buy the stuff, right? I just heard a tree knock. Footsteps, footsteps. Guys, we already have company. We are not alone, we already have company. Okay, Terry can hear it. Kenny says in these night videos, something's always lurking. Yeah. All right, let's. Peggy Wilcox says there's lots of Bigfoot in British Columbia, Canada. Um, hey there, sweetness overload. You're still here. That's good. Dinner bells. No, it's not a can of bees or beans. It's a can of soup. Who else we got on here? The real whoever. MF Royal. To me, they are a bat hybrid have a radar that can sense a camera. I catch things when I tape the sensor and run the camera continuous. That's a good idea. I've never done that, <clears throat> MF Royal. Thanks for that advice. Oh, the Darth Moth Mom One is here. Long time follower. Good to see you back. 
So Drew Bear heard a knock. Oh, TikTok 102 says, nice fire. Bonnie Bowden agrees it's a nice fire. Yeah. Okay. Carlos Baltierez says he hears voices. Uh, hey, Catherine Gay. Gray, Gay is here. Catherine Gay. Hello, Catherine. Long-time viewer. Um, Sammy Eldon in Arkansas, of course. I'm Matt. Says, what state are you in? We're in Virginia. Central Virginia, right outside of Charlottesville. All right, what we got going on here? All right, so. <clears throat> give us some shout-outs. Uh, let me put some more wood on here so it doesn't die out. I want that suit to be warm before I eat it. As warm as it can be, at least. Oh, I just broke my chair. Well. Okay, so uh, you remember that big giant white pine? Hey, Robbie Lynn in North Carolina. Uh, yeah, it's very dark here, it's night now. So that big white pine that fell, I cut it up. We typically don't burn pine in the wood stove. We did one winter because we ran out of firewood and it was just the tail end of winter. But uh, basically we're using it, all that pine after I cut it up, split it, we bring it up here and this is our campfire wood up here at the campground. So I'm going to be candid with you guys for a minute before we get into this full swing Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting stuff, okay? Footsteps. There's something walking around in the woods behind us. So listen, I'm going to be candid. <laughs> I've missed you guys, okay? I've been over in the Philippines for the last five months, but even before that, all last year, 2023, I just didn't really make a lot of videos. Um, I did in October for the October nights. I came out and I read the spooky stories, but uh, I was disenfranchised with YouTube because they tried to pretty much, I mean, and I've told this story before, they came out and they called me and they, they did this again today. Somebody personally called me from YouTube. Of course, I didn't answer the phone because I know their game now. Um, but we were doing well here on this channel, getting 20 million views a month, all grassroots efforts. I've never paid to promote. I've never paid to advertise. Um, just the videos that you folks liked. So many of you watched them. You shared them. They went viral, getting millions of views making more money than I ever thought I'd ever make in my life. So about two years ago, um, somebody from YouTube calls me and they say, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so and, -so and I'm going to be your personal YouTube coach. I'm going to help you get to the next level. We're really impressed with, with what you've done. You've got 300,000 subscribers. We've never helped you do that. You've done it all on your own. We're going to help you get to the next level. I'm like, that's great. What do we do? You know, she goes, well... Uh, what you need to do is start asking for super chats. Well, basically, we then went into a conversation where she was telling me I needed to start e-begging, right? Send me a super chat, $2 here, $2 there. Um, and, and by the way, a couple of you have sent me some money. I do appreciate that. Listen, I will never ask for it. Excuse me, but I'm always grateful for it because I have, bill, I have bills and I have big tax liabilities. Um, but... I also know that you have bills and you have taxes. You have to pay taxes. So I always tell people, please don't ever send me anything unless your needs are met first, unless your responsibilities are taken care of first. Um, but I don't know, she's 
going on and on about how people that have my many subscribe as many subscribers as me who really pushed the super chat thing made like an extra a hundred and some thousand a year and and I told her I'm like but I don't need that I mean I already make more money than we need make more money than we can spend our needs are met we want for nothing you know we we are beyond blessed and we realize this so I don't really feel comfortable doing this because I know a lot of folks don't have it to give but I know they would because they like me and she's like, oh, no, 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 you're thinking all wrong. You're thinking all wrong. Hey, I think I was thinking all right. So anyway, um, I refused to do it. I didn't do it. And within two weeks, our views dropped from 20 million views a month to half a million views a month. Uh, the revenues got cut by the, a similar percentage. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, snap. Well, what now? Footsteps, listen. Do you hear it? They're closing in on us. This is how, this is my, this is my, my, my method bra. You know this. I just sit here in the woods and tell stories and they come to hear them. It doesn't matter what story I tell. I'm going to tell you some creepy stories here in a few minutes, okay? So anyway, we went back to Facebook, um, kind of like restarted a page over there that we had that was dormant for four or five years, Sick Twisted Humor. A lot of you here are watching get, have come over from that page. We're up to 795,000 followers over there on that page now. We're going to hit a million, hopefully this year, 2024. Um, and we're making multiple times more money every month than we ever made during our best months on YouTube. It's ridiculous. It doesn't seem real. Sometimes on payday, I'm like, is my bank really going to accept this money as a deposit, you know, without contacting the government? <clears throat> um, but, but, but here's the deal. I, I did that because I had to. Uh, be, listen, they say... Uh, whoever it is you are fearful of criticizing is your master. Um, he who which you fear to criticize is your master. I have no master, okay? So YouTube wanted to... Okay, a lot of you have commented just in the last couple of weeks since we've been back from the Philippines, like, oh my God, you're back. Um, I, I was unsubscribed to your channel or I don't get notifications when you upload a video. Yeah, it's by design. Okay. Um, no one is my master. No one. Money has never been my God, nor shall it ever be. I do need to make enough to take care of my family. And I do times a thousand. Uh, so we went to Facebook and, and, and we're taken care of there. But I missed you guys. I missed making these videos. I missed communicating with you guys, like in the chat right now, live streaming. So when I was in the Philippines for five months and, and just really taking a big break from this and from my life in America, from American society, uh, I just, you know, I just got to some thinking and, and it's like, uh, I really enjoy making YouTube videos. I really enjoy going night hunting for Bigfoot Sasquatch on my property, which may or may not have a Bigfoot Sasquatch living in the I don't care about the money anymore. I don't care that YouTube has unsubscribed some of my most faithful followers. I don't care that YouTube no longer sends notifications to my faithful followers. I'm going to make these videos anyway because I enjoy it. And those of you who do show up and who do participate and do, who do chat, you're worth it to me. That's, that's worth more than a payment. Hey, our bills are paid a thousand times over by Facebook, okay? Uh... I do that for the financial aspects of it, to take care of my family. I'm doing this out of pure enjoyment. This is my hobby. Once upon a time, this was my main revenue source, and I did this out of necessity. No longer will this be a necessity for me because this is no longer, not even close to being my primary income source. I will now do this out of pure enjoyment because I enjoy you guys, you guys are great people. You're wonderful people. You've been here with us since somebody mentioned earlier uh, it, uh, uh, that they've been with us since before I had my job at the post office. 
That's going back to 2017. This channel started in 2016. That was eight years ago. And, you know, if you ha have been committed enough to still be here after eight years, then by God, I am recommitting to you to be here no matter what these asshats at YouTube do because I don't want to e-bag and tell you to send me super chats. There. I've been candid. I've been frank. All right. Let me give some more shout outs. All right. Who we got here? Terry Finnan from Ireland. It's a while since I've seen you live. Kevin, been watching on and off for years since the beginning. Bought a few books too. Thank you for the hard work. Terry, thank you. Thank you for believing, for supporting, for reading my books. Those are pretty good, aren't they? Uh, Catitude liked when I said asshats. Kenny, well, I think we appreciate your vids. We have had a good time watching those strange moments you've had in those woods. There's been a lot of weird stuff going on around here, no? Sweetness over... Load says, we love how much you care about us, Kevin. Thank you. We are welcome. Andrea Dingbad is asking for a scary story. All right. All right. Is it okay if I tell you a scary story while I eat my, 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 uh, Catitude loves the books. Hey, I'm working on one right now. Listen, I was going to kind of keep it a secret because I've been working on it for three years. Listen, footsteps. There's something in the woods just right off the side of the meadow. So here's what we're going to do. All right. Because we are out here Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting. Right? So it's time to use this flashlight. There is something creeping up on me back here behind the firewood pile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle of the camera to go in that direction where I'm hearing the footsteps. And I'm just going to turn the flashlight on. Okay? So you guys ready? Watch. Let's see what's over there. Oh my God, look. Oh my gosh. Guys, we got some paranormal activity going on up here. This flashlight, I turn it on and shine something and it goes out. Oh, look, it just came back. You didn't hear it, click the button. Watch, watch again. It just went out again. And now it's not coming on. There it is. So I'm not seeing any eye shine. Ah, it's me. Let's look over here. What the heck? Now, now the light's working just fine. What the hell? I think whatever was over there, like zapped our light to turn it off long enough for it to go to to get away. Look, it's working just fine now. How could it die? But now all of a sudden it's working just fine. Guys, I think we got something paranormal slash supernatural slash cryptozoological going on here. There, I'm gonna save that. I ready to eat my soup. Tell a creepy story. Hey, what's up? Bella. Bella is here. Maria uh, Algira in Texas. Steve Canyon saw a Bigfoot in Colorado 13 years ago. All right. More footsteps, listen. Hear it? It's getting close. It's like it killed our flashlight long enough to get away. 
And now it's coming back in. Guys, I think we got a Bigfoot Sasquatch out here tonight. Listen. Okay, I'm gonna go mobile. I'm taking the phone and I'm gonna walk towards. Listen. Did you hear those footsteps? I hear those footsteps in the woods behind me. They just stopped. Guys, we got something in the woods behind us. Twenty yards from the woods, and there's something twenty yards inside the woods. Do you hear it moving? Oh my God, guys, we got to get this on film. All right, so you guys hear him. I'm reading the comments. something out here and I'll tell you what it is. I'm not going to turn the light on until I'm very close to it. Hey, see you back. We got something in the woods. I'm going back here to try to see what it is. All right. Oh, my God, again. The light just went out again. Hear it. It's down here. Listen. something in the woods and our flashlight has been rendered useless. What was that? What the hell was that? Sasquatch. Uh, did you guys see that? And then you, did you hear it as it walked back into the woods? Oh my God. Guys, this is for reals. Listen. Hear it. Oh my God. Let's get back to the fire. I gotta get back to the fire. This is too creepy. Look at this. Down there's my house. There's the moon. There's a the fire. Guys, oh my gosh. We have got something out here in the woods that keeps creeping up on us. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it keeps killing our flashlight. All right. Oh my gosh. Let me reverse the camera again. All right. Is, can you see me? Yeah, okay, I reverse the camera. Let me get this fire built back up. I'll feel a little more safe. We got this fire built back up. Get this camera in here. There we go. All right. some more firewood. Okay. Bear with me.
Well, guys, that was a little creepy, wasn't it? I want to ask, can you guys hear that thing walking around in the woods? Could you hear it walking? Did you hear it running away? Yeah, dinner bell says they like to mess with me. Yeah. <clears throat> JF says it's gonna grab me, keep my head on a swivel, yeah. Bella says it sounded like there was more than one out there. They're trying to flank me. That's happened a lot. <clears throat> JF says to wrap the flashlight in tinfoil. That's the only way to keep them from zapping the power out of it. Okay. Andrea Dingback could hear it. Jedzia says it, it's like dry leaves crunching. Yeah, because you could hear something walking. Bombers Baseball says, bro, it's behind you. Yeah, everybody heard it. So you guys could hear it. JF says, oh, I hear it too. Yeah, so you guys can hear it. And the video was freezing. Could that have been them using their powers to freeze the video? All right, so let me get my soup. Eat my soup, huh? Guys, just keep listening, huh? listening keep watching <clears throat> Do you hear that? it's coming back listen I have felt for years like these are just creatures of curiosity. Why did the flames kick up like that just now? So I believe these are creatures of curiosity. That's why they come in so often. When I just sit out here in the woods or in the field and just tell stories. They want to know what the heck I'm doing, you know? Whatever it is, it's back. It's just inside the wood line. It's literally probably like 30 yards away from us right now. <clears throat> so Drew Bear thinks it could be something paranormal in nature because they mess with the electrical fields. Hi, George, you're back, huh? Maria Bella, thanks. Us. What the, what was that? Bella says, thanks for the night hunt. You're, you're welcome. Terry Finnan asks if there's still paranormal activity in our house. Yes, there is. Dave Bailey says it could be Sasquatch. That's what I think it is.
Twisted Nip Z718 wants to know what kind of paranormal activity we experience. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you here in just a minute. Terry asking the same thing, wants to hear some scary stories of our house. Shout out to Dave Bailey. You know, YouTube wants me to charge people for shout outs. What kind of horse shit is that? You're giving me your time to come here and watch what I'm doing. I can say hello to you. You know what I mean? Hey, John Homer in England. You're welcome, Dave. Thank you for being here. Oh, um, well, George, next time you say hi to the parents, tell them I said hi. Yeah, Kenny. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Kenny mentions about how they get on you for speaking truth. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> I don't even know what I'm allowed to say anymore. Hey, Jennifer Brutt. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. <laughs> Terry Finnan. She can't tell if she hears them walking or if it's me chewing. Guys, I That wasn't me chewing. I think Bella was right. I think they're trying to, uh, to flank me. <clears throat> George is asking when's the scary story start. Um, hey, John. I tried TikTok for a while. It just didn't work out for me. <clears throat> I'm not going to invest too much time in that because I think it might be gone here in a bit. George, the scary story is going to start in about three minutes. Didn't realize how hungry I was. <laughs> Janelle Davis says, ah, hell no, nah, I'm leaving this stream. Why, Janelle, are you afraid of scary stories? <clears throat> Sammy Eldon's ready for scary stories. Sammy has their popcorn with them. frog.
<laughs> JF. <clears throat> so simplify. Simplify to you, JF. But I wasn't a Marine. I was an Army. I was in the Army. I was an airborne infantryman. And no, Kenny, that's not why I'm brave. I think it's why I'm crazy. And I think why I'm crazy is why I was an airborne infantryman. Who the hell jumps out of a perfectly good airplane if they're not nuts, right? I did it. I think I'm nuts. I mean, yeah, that's right, Jeff. Hoorah. It's hoorah if you're in the Marines. It's, no. Did you hear that? That came from behind me on top of the mountain. That might be dog man. It's hua if you're army. Hua. Hmm. Here's a scary story for you. Short and sweet. It's a Halloween story. Hmm. And it's never, you guys heard the house too good. It's never been put in print because it's just simply too short. It's too short of a story to write. But I'll tell it right now. It's the scariest Halloween I ever had. The scariest Halloween experience I ever had. Okay? <clears throat> so... I served in Iraq, 2008-2009, as a machine gunner for a convoy security team, right? It was my only deployment, first and only deployment. So we were in Kuwait. Um, we spent three months at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, um, training up, learning our job that we would do in, in Iraq, which was to escort every night. <clears throat> I just heard footsteps. They're coming in to listen to the stories. And folks, by the way, story time has begun. <clears throat> so uh, we would escort 100 empty tractor trailers every night from Mosul to the border of Turkey, a little town called Zako. Um, and then the next night, after these tractor trailers had been filled with supplies, uh, we would take them back down to Mosul, and then from there they'd be distributed all over Iraq. So we spent three months training for that in Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. Then we went to Kuwait, where we stayed for three weeks, just to become acclimated to the weather, the climate, and the time difference. Um, then we flew into Mosul, Iraq. So we got our gear on, had our rifles, our weapons, um, loaded this big C-130, smushed in so close together you couldn't even move. And we flew from Kuwait into Mosul. So the uh, pilot announced that we were descending into Mosul. He was uh, with the Air Force. And he said, he says, when I land this plane, once that door opens, every last one of you got two minutes to get the hell out of my plane. Because the longer I'm on this plane, on that runway, the longer I'm a target. Get the hell out of my plane so I can get the hell out of Iraq. Enjoy your next year. And I thought, wow. It, and I said to myself, I'm always going to remember this. And this was 2008. So what was this? 2000, this was 16 years ago. And here I am retelling the tale. So I've obviously not forgotten. So I said to myself in my head, you know, I, I'm always going to remember this. So I want to know the date. So I'll never forget. This is a date that will live in infamy in my mind, right? So I look at my watch to see what the date was. Guess what the date was? October 31. There's something right over there. There's something right over there. Hear it? 
So yeah, Halloween, Halloween, I'm landing in Mosul, Iraq. Whew. Most terrifying Halloween of my life. Yeah, Catitude says it's the best day of the year. I agree. Yeah. Drew Bear says he's not a cursor, but damn, I know, right? That's the kind of crap you just can't make up. All right. That was the fire. So let me go get another couple pieces of firewood, and I'm going to come back and tell some scary stories. I'm going to talk about our haunted house and some of the paranormal activities we have experienced in it since you folks have asked about it, okay? Let me go get some more wood. I don't want this fire dying down with these things flanking us. Bella is right. Her, her, her name shows up as Maria, but uh, she goes by Bella. She's in Texas, a wonderful artist. We have pictures hanging on our wall in our house that, that Bella drew. Um, let me go get some wood. I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. <laughs> All right, somebody had something. Mackenzie, what well, something happened to your dog? Kenzie, can you please give me a shout out because I'm really sad because my dog just died. <clears throat> Mackenzie is country 59. Mackenzie, so sorry to hear that your dog just died. I see a lot of people commenting here that they're sorry for that. Looks like Kenny left. Bye, Kenny. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, somebody's saying hope Sasquatch gets somebody. I hope you don't hope Sasquatch gets me. All right, yeah, it's story time, Terry. Here we go. So I'm going to get closer to this fire because it's getting cold. Is that okay with you guys? Mm, don't want to get too close. Get burned up. I'm get catch my dumb ass on fire. I want you guys to get a real good view of that fire as you listen to these scary stories. They say smoke follows beauty. It's following me. So I have to just cover my face a little bit. <clears throat> All right. 
Terry can feel the heat from the fire all the way in Ireland. Um, all right, so here we go. So we're in the Philippines for five months this winter. Just got back two weeks ago, tomorrow actually. And while we were over there, uh, one of Dearly's brothers stayed with us uh, while we were there. His name is Earl. He's my, I don't call him an in-law. Uh, me and Dearly's family were all so close. We don't use the term in-law. So Earl was a brother of mine. Very proud of Earl. Earl is, um, he's 27 years old. And uh, he went to college many, many years ago to be a police officer. He was majoring in criminology. Uh, he he made it to his last year, and then he he uh, he got his girlfriend pregnant, and he he dropped out of college, you know, to be responsible, go to work, get a job. Uh, but now, several years later, he realizes that without finishing his education, without securing that job in law enforcement, he's really never going to have uh, the life that he would like to have for him and his and his his lady and and their daughter. So. He went back to college, and I'm so proud of him because here he is, 27 years old, hanging out with a bunch of 20-year-olds, but he's finishing up his degree. So I couldn't be more proud of my brother Earl. Uh, he's got one semester left after this semester. He only... Oh, that was a fire. I thought Bigfoot Sasquatch was like right there. <laughs> I think the fire thought that was funny, so it did it again. So anyway... <clears throat> Uh, he only needed one more class, but they're not offering it until next semester. So he's got to go back next semester, but then he'll get out. Then he goes to police academy. And so he was with us and he asked me the same question because our house is 121 years old. It was built in 1903. Uh, it was a sharecropper house. Our property is six acres. But once upon a time, okay, the woman we bought this property from was like 88 when we bought it. She's still alive. She's like 96 now. Her husband passed away last year, sadly. Uh, he was a wonderful man. I read his obituary. I didn't realize it. He was actually a scientist. And uh, I, he used to be, I think he used to be the head of the science department at the University of Virginia here in Charlottesville. Very accomplished man. Um, so, but at one point, her father owned all this land, and it was over 400 acres. Uh, I think his father might have owned it. So this is going back to the late 1800s. So it was like a big commercial farm. Um, but then, of course, after the Civil War, uh, I don't know if they ever had I don't know if they had slaves. But you'll remember sharecropping came into being after the end of slavery. And what that involved was... The, the landowners, like this woman's father and grandfather, they had the land, um, but they didn't have the ability to really do the work themselves or didn't want to. Maybe they never had to. Uh, so the sharecroppers would come in and they would farm the land, do all the work, and then they got to keep a percentage of the proceeds of the sales when they sold the crops. So guys, as close as I want to be to the fire, it's just too smoky. I got to back up a little bit. Our house, I just heard a tree knock, built in 1903 um, on a stone foundation that's still there, made out of solid oak beams, which are still there. It's still standing, and this house will be here 100 years after all these nice new houses and all these subdivisions have fallen down. It's just, it's solid, but it has a long history. There's been many deaths in our house, um, predominantly the most known, well, oh geez, there's been, the most recent was only two years before we actually moved in here. I've never told this story out of respect for some of the family that's around here that, that is involved. Um, of course, I know some of them just moved away. I'm going to tell that story. So, uh, anyway, um, there were three little girls that died in the house in 1918 during the Spanish pandemic, the Spanish flu pandemic, which was the, you know, every 100 years, we typically have a worldwide pandemic. Here a few years ago, it was COVID. In 1918, I mean, like almost 100 years to the date, 102 years before COVID, it was the Spanish flu. And these little girls, they all got it. They contracted it. And 
course, back then the, you know, we, we had to wear face masks back then. If you got the Spanish flu, it's like you weren't allowed to leave your house. And basically they killed the entire family because everybody was locked up together with the person that was infected, then everybody died. You know, they didn't figure that out until years later. Um, so anyway, they're buried in the woods right back here behind us. So uh, there are a couple of places in our house, being that it's very old and it has hardwood floors, where when you walk certain places, when someone walks there, it makes a certain creaky sound. And the sound is only made by weight pressure, by somebody standing there. Now, the, the house being old as it is, it creaks and groans and moans. With the changing temperatures, uh, the, the roof pops in the summer as it heats up. Um, the door frames, you'll, you'll hear them crackling and popping. But these places, there's one step on the staircase and one place. And why did I talk about my brother Earl? Because he asked the same question I was telling him. Uh, basically, I'm telling you the same story I told Earl in the Philippines this summer. So I'm a very early riser. It doesn't matter how late I go to bed at night. I'm up by 5 a.m. like every morning. Um, I'm a morning person. I'm most effective in the morning. I pride myself on getting more work done by 10 a.m. than most people will get done all day. I write. That's when I have my alone time because my wife and my son, they don't get up early. Um, so I'm alone with my thoughts. That's when I'm most creative. Uh, I'll write 4,000, 5,000 words in a morning, which is like uh, 10 to 20 pages in a book. <clears throat> um, I, I come up with ideas for my social media content. Uh, I read. Uh, I run. I, that's why I do my workouts. So, but here, here's the deal. Well, whatever. It's when we first drink coffee, I'll make coffee. Don't dare cook your own food. I'll make your food. What I started doing is, since I get up early, she puts the coffee, my coffee. If she does wake up before me, which happens sometimes, since I reciprocate, when I hear her get up in the mornings, I, I stop what I'm doing, no matter where I'm at in my work, and I, I go downstairs and I make her coffee, okay? If people talk about they love our relationship, what's the keys to a successful marriage, listen, it's not about everybody giving... 50-50. It's about everybody giving a hundred percent. Okay. Both of you give a hundred percent. And, uh, she goes out of her way to do these nice little simple things for me. So I make sure to go out of my way to do these nice little simple things for her. Now, with that said, um, there's been so many times where it's like 6 AM. I've had my coffee. I'm upstairs writing and I hear that creak and then I think, oh, dearly my stairs. There's one. I'm going upstairs in the mornings to work because our master bedroom is downstairs. I skip that step. Twelfth step. Make that. It's like a screech. It's like wood sliding against wood. And I think, oh, shit. Is this. I get to the end of the story and the internet went out. But I'm back, guys. Just hang in there with me. So I will literally get up from my desk if I'm writing at my desk, or I'll get out of the bed if I'm at bed. And I'll walk out of the room, and I like it is. This has happened a dozen times, sometimes in the last eight years that we lived here. I will stick my head out of the door. Hey, honey, good morning. And there's no one there. There's no one there. And I'm thinking, well, maybe she had to go to the bathroom. She went downstairs to go to the bathroom. So I'll creep down the stairs. I won't make a sound. She's not downstairs. She's not in the bathroom. I peek in the master bedroom. She's still asleep. I look in at Daniel, wherever he's sleeping that night. His kid sleeps all over the house. He's still asleep. No one's awake but me. Okay, and so it's happened early in the morning. And then there's been times when dearly and Daniel will go out and have play dates with like one of Daniel's friends and the friend's mother, who's dearly's friend. And so I'm home alone all day. So two or three in the afternoon, I'm upstairs, I'm in my office, I'm working, or maybe I'm taking a nap. And that creak, creaking sound, it'll wake me up. I, I wake up, okay, somebody's walking around downstairs. I'm thinking, oh, they must be home. Then I hear that 12th step on the staircase. And I'm like, I say, hey, honey, you guys back already? But nobody answers. So I get out of bed. I go down to the stairs. There's no one there. 
uh, no one's in the house, and it's another three or four hours before they come home, so there's no one there. It is so quiet right now, it's creepy. All right, so we are very low battery. I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon. I hope I have time to tell you one more scary story. We're at 7%. All right, let me try to get another quick one in for you, okay? So, I've made over 2,000 videos on this channel. Uh, a lot of you have seen them all. Uh, there are two videos out of over 2,000 that creep me the hell out. This is another conversation I have with my brother Earl. There's the one, of course, where we potentially captured Bigfoot Sasquatch on camera in October of 2019. That's because I had no clue that thing was out there in the woods with me. If you haven't seen it, just go to your YouTube search bar after you watch this and type in Homesteading Bigfoot Lair, L-A-I-R. It'll come up. It's from October of 2019. Uh, when I that video published it, like dozens of people started commenting, oh my God, look at in a half minute mark, there's a Bigfoot. People are always times and stuff from parts of the video, but when I saw like 15 people in like a five minute period say the same time on the video, I went, I went back in and I watched the video and I saw that thing walk behind the tree. And the hair on my arm stood up because I honestly believe that in that video we captured a Bigfoot Sasquatch. So there's that one. And then here's the other one. The other one happened right up here. And I'm making this quick because the phone's about to die. Uh, next time I do this, I promise I'll be 100% charged. So many, many years ago, we were having this uh, ornaments of inspiration tree up here. People who've been through hard times, they'd tell us their story on YouTube in the comment section. And then we'd hang like a Christmas ornament on this bush back here for him. Well, I was back here doing a night hunt just like this. And I was shining the light and the camera on that bush that had all these ornaments. And I said, if there's anyone here with us right now, if there's a presence here, let your presence be known. And at that very moment, an ornament fell off of that bush. Okay. And if you've seen that video, if you remember that, please back me up in the comment section and say, hey, I remember that video. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, that was perfect timing. This is going to be great for views, right? I'm thinking like greedy social media content creator way, right? So I take that ornament, I, fin I finish, I put it in my pocket, I finish the video, go down to the house. I put that ornament on our Christmas tree in the house because it was a Christmas season. And uh, I upload the video, I publish the video, and I tell my wife dearly, I say, dearly, you won't believe what happened. So I told her what, what happened. I said, look, I pull up the video. I say, watch this, watch this. So we're watching the video, and in the video, I say, if, if there's anything here, anyone here, please let us, please let your presence be known. So in the video, we see that ornament drop off that bush. At the exact same time, that ornament dropped off of our Christmas tree in the living room of our house. At the exact same time, it dropped off of the bush out here. Me and her both got creeped out. So... I took that ornament and in, to this day, and that was like 2018, so that was six years ago. To this day, that ornament hangs on a bush where those three little girls that died of the Spanish flu in 1918 are buried in the woods behind my house because I kind of felt that's who was sending that message. So that to date is one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced in my life. Because listen, they're... Okay, is there a coincidence? Is there such thing of a coincidence? Some people say yes, some say no. But can coincidences happen twice like that in the same night over this freaking ornament falls off the bush while I'm recording? Then it falls off my freaking Christmas tree in the living room. It, it, oh my gosh, at the exact moment. Listen, I fancy myself to be a... I've been successful at writing. Some of you read my books. You say they're not bad. I couldn't make that up if I tried. Catitude remembers that. Laura Hill says, thank you for the stories. Good night. Good night, Laura Hill. Darth Mom says, thank you for tonight. Uh, Terry Finnan says, yes, it was. It was weird though. So, yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah, Irving Johnson remembers seeing that. All right, so guys, going to have to 
shut it down. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Hope you enjoyed the night hunt. It was successful. We had potentially a Bigfoot Sasquatch in the woods walking around behind us all night. Got to hear some creepy ghost stories. And uh, we'll do this some more. Here in, a, here in another couple days or whatever, we'll do it again, all right? And I'll make sure my phone is fully charged, okay? Yeah, the Mrs. Edmondson, Oklahoma, remember that. Glad you liked it, Bella. See you, J.D. Jadzia. John Homer, you told us a story about whispering to that guy in the Philippines, and the lady knew about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, about the chicken. Boy, that was creepy, wasn't it? Whew. All right. See you guys next time.